topic we'll be discussing in this lecture is cellular systems cellular systems for mobile communications were basically implemented by using sdm that is space division multiplexing because here each transmitter is typically called as a base station and the base station covers a certain area of a cell the radius of the cell can vary from several uh, tens of meters to tens of kilometers that is if the base station is within a building then it may cover several tens of meters in cities it may cover several hundreds of meters and in countryside it may cover up to several tens of kilometers the shape of the cells are normally represented by using a hexagon but it need not be a hexagon or a perfect uh, circle in the real world in the real world actually the shape of the uh, cell depends on the environment the shape of the cell depends on the environment so environment in the sense it includes uh, buildings mountains valleys etc whatever there in the environment so depending on the environment the, the structure of the cell will change for example uh, in an in a mountain environment the cell structure will be something different and and in between buildings if the if there are more buildings in the in the area where the cell is uh, located then the structure of the cell will be different if so basically it, it depends uh, on the environment on weather conditions and also sometimes it depends on the load on the systems so weather condition may also uh, influence the structure of the cells okay so if the weather is very hot or if the weather is very cold or it or if the weather is rainy so accordingly the cell size may vary similarly if the load if the load is high or if the load is low then then also the cell size may either uh, shrink or it may become bigger okay so so the cell size is uh, always it will not be a hexagon or a circle form uh, for understanding theoretically in textbooks or or in any learning materials it is represented in the form of hexagon or circle but in real life it need not be in real time it need not be so okay so right so so mobile station within a within the cell around a base station communicates uh, with this base station okay so what so what so mobile stations in the sense mobile phone mobile station means mobile phone the mobile phone uh, that are that are that are within the cell around a, around a particular base station will communicate with that particular base station and the base station also in turn will communicate with the respective mobile device okay so this is how actually the basically the cellular communication works that is each base station will will, will cover a certain area and that area is called as cell and whichever the mobile station uh, comes within that particular area or that particular cell will communicate with that particular uh, base station and and in turn that base station also uh, will communicate or will respond to that particular uh, mobile phones okay that is each base station will will cover one area and that area is called as cell and the radius of the cell it it varies from several tens of meters to several tens of uh, kilometers depending on on where the uh, cell is uh, located or it is uh, placed okay so, so this is the 
a basic introduction to the cellular, cellular system. Now let us try to understand like why sh why should we have so many base stations? What is the need to install so many base stations? Why why there are several thousands of base stations were installed? If you take the example of uh, radio stations, there is only one radio station for each channel, and it is broadcasting uh, its information using a powerful transmitter uh, throughout the state or throughout the country or whatever it may be. Why can't we have such a system for mobile phones? Why can't we have such a system for mobile phones? Why should we? Why should each service provider should spend so much money on installing several thousands of base stations? So there are certain reasons. So let us try to understand the reasons. So what are the advantage of having cellular systems with small cells? Small cells in the sense, uh, each base station will form one cell. So what is the advantage of that? So that let us try to understand. So the first advantage is higher capacity. Okay. So implementing an space division multiplexing allows frequency reuse. So if there are more base stations, then what does it mean in the sense, the base station covers only a limited area. So whatever the frequency is used in that particular base stations can be reused in, in, the, in the coverage area of another base station, okay? So if one transmitter is far away from another, that is if one base station is far away from another, and if they are outside the interference range, if if the two base station, they don't uh, inter the signals from the two base stations. If they are not interfering with each other, then then the signals can be reused. Then the signals can be reused. Most of the mobile phones uh, systems are assigned frequencies to certain users. Okay, so this frequency uh, is blocked for other users. So in, in some cases, in, 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 in some of the mobile phone systems, what happened in the sense, certain frequencies are blocked for certain users. Okay, but actually frequency is a scarce resource. So it means that these frequencies are blocked for other, other users. Okay, so in that case, number of concurrent users per cell is limited. If you say that uh, this frequency is for this user, that, uh, this frequency is for some other user. If you differentiate like that, then the number of concurrent users will be limited uh, because you have only very limited set of frequencies. The frequencies are not under uh, the control of the system. Rather, once it is allocated, it is for that particular person. Okay? So huge cells do not allow uh, for more users. Generally, if the cell size is huge, it won't allow for more users, but they are, but they are limited to, uh, they are they are limited to less possible users per per square kilometer. Okay, so this is also the reason for using very small cells in cities, right? Because um, uh, because the number of uh, users within a cell is limited, so so we have a better control. If, if, if everybody comes under one base station, that is, if you have only one base station for the entire country, India, or if you have only one base station for a particular state, then what will happen in the sense managing these users uh, within one base station is also very difficult, okay? So the, so the key takeaway point is, first is why we have uh, several base stations instead of one in the sense uh, because of the first heading higher capacity. So here, what we discussed in the sense one is frequency reuse, one is frequency reuse, and another another one is uh, when you divide into multiple base stations, uh, the number of users per per base stations will be limited. So we have a better control. Okay. Next is less transmission power. What does it mean? So transmission, so the power aspect is not a problem for base station, okay? but actually power is an issue for mobile phones. And a receiver uh, who is away from the base station, 
receiver who is away from a base station needs more power needs more power okay so so if there are more users in 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 a particular base station uh, then uh, then then the service may not be effectively provided uh, for the user uh, who are away from the base stations okay that is also one of the reason why we have multiple base stations because if you have multiple base station uh, what happens in the sense the number of users in that base station will be comparatively less okay so even though if a user is away from the base station uh, by spending more some extra power he will be able to connect with the base station that is the uh, second reason why should we have several thousands of base stations instead of one base station the third reason is local interference only so 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 if you have only one base stations then then there will be interference from all the users because every user will be connected to this one base station okay so but but if you have many base stations then for each base station there will be a limited number of users so so the signal will will get interfered only by these users okay so basically uh, having long distance between sender and receivers uh, result in more interference problem okay so if you have only one base station for the entire country uh, then there will be more interference problem with small with 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 small cells uh, mobile stations and base station only have to deal with the local interference so dealing with the local interference is comparatively easier okay the next is robustness so what is meant by robustness so robustness means cellular systems are are basically decentralized so more robust against a failure of single components so if there is only one base station throughout the country and if that base station fails then the entire entire users who are using that particular service from the mobile uh, from that particular base station they all will not be able to communicate but that is not the case if you maintain multiple base stations even if one base station fails the others will work okay and also in some cases the other base station can compensate compensate for the users coming under in this base station also okay right so if one antenna fails this only influence the communication within a small area so these are some of the reasons uh, why uh, uh, we should have multiple base stations instead of a single base station throughout the country okay so there are also some of the uh, disadvantages of for having multiple base stations so let us try to analyze those uh, disadvantages so the first disadvantage is infrastructure is needed we need uh, if you if you want to have thousands of base stations then obviously some infrastructure is required okay and cellular systems generally require complex infrastructure to connect all the base stations so because because you may have to install many antennas uh, switches for call forwarding and for for other tasks okay so so basically the whole system uh, may become more expensive so this is one of the uh, disadvantage the second disadvantage is handover is required if a user is moving from moving if a user is moving then obviously after a period of time Uh, he will reach a point where uh, where his connect where he may lose the connectivity with his base station so in that case his mobile phone should be connected with other the another base station uh, in which place where he is going so that process is called as handover so so whenever mobile station uh, so so in this case if there is if there are thousands of base stations uh, the handover has to be performed effectively but if there is only one base station for the whole country then there is no question of handover so depending on the cell size and the speed of movement depending on the size of the cell and the speed of the speed at which the user is moving uh, 
So depending on that, this uh, handover may occur either more frequently or less frequently. Okay. And the next uh, disadvantage of having uh, uh, many base stations or small cells is frequency planning. So to avoid interference, to avoid uh, uh, interference between transmitters using the same frequencies, frequency have to be distributed carefully. Frequencies have to be distributed carefully. Um, so we should avoid frequency uh, and also uh, there are also limited number of frequencies available. But also we should avoid interference. Interference should be avoided but at the same time, the number of frequencies available were also limited. So, so these are the disadvantages of having uh, multiple base stations instead of a single base station. Next thing what we'll be discussing is uh, to avoid uh, interference. Okay. So what one of the technique uh, that is followed is different transmitters within each other's interference range, they can use FDM. If there are more than one transmitters and if they are falling in their interference range, okay, if there are more than one base station and if they are getting, if they are falling in an interference range, then they can use FDM, frequency division multiplexing. That is, that is as they are uh, uh, interfering with each other, uh, each user, okay, each user or, or each cell may work on different frequencies. So that is called as frequency division multiplexing. Otherwise, you can also use a combination of frequency division multiplexing and time division multiplexing as we have discussed sometimes earlier. And if you use frequency division, if you use the combination of frequency division multiplexing and time division multiplexing, then the hoping pattern should be coordinated. So here the general goal is never to use the same frequency at the, the same time within the interference range. So, so two possible models are available uh, for, for cell patterns with, with minimum interference that is shown here in, in the diagram. So the first pattern here you can see here there are uh, here, 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 three cells were, were combined to form a cluster. You can see three cells were combined together to form a cluster. For example, this is one cluster, F1, F2, F3. Okay. So, 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 like, this is another cluster, F1, F2, F3. Like that, every three cells, they, they, this is another cluster, F1, F2, F3. Okay. This is another cluster. Okay. So like there are three cells, uh, uh, they form a, a cluster, right? Uh, so, and, and in the right side figure, what happens in the sense, seven cells form a cluster. Okay? So why, why you should, why this type of cluster should be formed? So basically, basically the cells within a cluster, each of the cells use a unique frequency. So if you see this particular cluster, uh, each the cells within this cluster, each cell uses a different frequency. One of the cell uses F1, the other uses F2, the other uses F3. So this clustering scheme can be used uh, to, to for frequency reuse, for frequency uh, reuse. So this pattern also shows the repetition of the same frequency sets. The same frequency sets can be uh, repeated. Okay. Transmission power of the center has to be limited uh, to avoid interference with the next cell using the same frequency. Okay, the transmission power of the center should be limited so that uh, interference can be avoided. Okay. And to reduce the interference further, uh, you can use something called as sectorized antenna, which is shown in this diagram. So sectorized antenna can be used. To reduce the to reduce the interference uh, further, okay. So, so 
So, so this is how interference can be reduced. Okay, either uh, by clustering or by using uh, sectorized antenna. So, so sectorized antennas can be used to reduce interference even further. Okay. Fixed assignment of frequencies to cell. Uh, if 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 fixed if the frequencies to each cell, each cell is nothing but the area covered by the base station. If if for the area covered by the for area covered by the base station, it is called a cell. If for each each cell, if the frequencies are fixed, then then that is not an efficient technique because the traffic load varies. The traffic load varies. So at some times, some of the uh, what do you call some of the cells, uh, the traffic load may be very high, but for other cells, the traffic load may not be that high. Okay, so so generally the system should allow uh, to borrow frequencies. The system should allow to borrow frequency because if heavy a load in one cell and light load in another cell, in the sense uh, the, the the user who needs a heavy load can borrow frequencies from the uh, light load. Uh, the user who needs a light load frequency. So, so this concept is called as borrowing channel allocation. Cells with more traffic are dynamically allocated more frequencies. Okay. So whichever the cell, there are more traffic, they are automatically allocated with more frequencies. So fixed channel allocation is a technique which is used in GSM. So GSM is global system for mobile communication. So, so GSM uses a fixed channel allocation because it is simpler to implement. So implementing fixed channel allocation is, is very easy. So that is one of the reason why GSM uses fixed channel allocation. Uh, but before going for fixed channel allocation, uh, it, it, it also demands a careful traffic analysis before installation. Because, uh, because you should assign uh, different range of frequencies for different cells. So you should have an idea like uh, in which cell uh, typically there will be more load compared to some other cell so that that can be allocated uh, more frequencies or better frequencies. Okay. Uh, so, so, so that is what is called as fixed channel allocation. Okay. And, and then we have something called as dynamic channel allocation. Uh, the dynamic channel allocation is used in DECT. Okay. Here the frequencies can be borrowed. Okay, the cells can follow bo borrow frequencies from the uh, neighboring cell. Okay, this is how uh, uh, dynamic channel allocation works. Okay. And cellular systems with that uses. Uh, CDM, that is code division multiplexing. If the cellular system is using CDM, code division multiplexing, and not FDM or TDM, then they do not need elaborate channel allocation scheme and complex frequency planning. Because, because, because these are separated by codes. Okay? Because here users are separated by code. And higher the noise, higher the path loss. So for any signal, if the noise is more, the signal is encountering through more noise, then there will be, there is a chance for more path loss. And also there is a chance for high transmission errors. So, so, so we should ensure that the noise is suppressed or removed uh, as much as uh, possible. Okay. And, and and also what happens in the sense, the mobile phones that are further away from the base stations, uh, naturally they drop out of the cell. The mobile, store, the mobile phones that are away from the base stations, uh, they will drop out of the cell. That is uh, shown by this diagram. So here what you can observe in the sense, uh, this is a base station and there are mobile many mobile phones connected with the base station. And this is the transmission range of the mobile phone. Okay, so in this range, the transmission or the signal is received in a very good way. But in the outer range, it is not uh, that good, it is little weak. 
okay but during this time say for example one of the user if this particular user if he is demanding an uh, high speed video if he is requesting the mobile phone mobile station sorry base station if this user is requesting the base station uh, to download a, a digital video okay to download a high definition digital video then what happens in the sense the the base station has to provide a more bandwidth for this user the base station should provide more bandwidth for this particular user compared to other users so because of that what may happen in the sense these two users who are who are little out of that uh, communication range these two users who are little out of the communication range uh, they may get disconnected they may get uh, uh, disconnected okay. so so this is the so this is what this diagram says okay so this additional users lets the shell to shrink okay because this this user is demanding an uh, uh, high speed video content so which allows the cell size to shrink so basically this is the cell size this is the cell size of this uh, base station uh, but the size of the cell uh, shrinks okay because of uh, because of the demand of an uh, a high speed video by one of the user okay so that's it about cellular systems so basically uh, in cellular systems uh, we have discussed several things like so, so we have discussed that cellular system uses sdm and 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 we have discussed that the area is covered by the base station is called as cell and we have understood that the cell need not be circle or hexagon actually the size of the cell cell is affected by uh, various environmental weather conditions and 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 other factors okay then we have discussed uh, uh, the advantage of cellular systems okay so so the advantages what we have discussed is uh, higher capacity so in the sense uh, we can use frequency can be reused if you have uh, multiple cells multiple cells instead of one single common common base station the frequencies can be uh, reused okay and uh, and also huge cells do not allow for more users the number of users uh, per base stations also will be less which is which is manageable okay and also it uh, this the next reason is it needs less transmission power needs less transmission power okay so so if there is a if there is a user so it is difficult if there is only one base station say that base station is located in in delhi then how much power your mobile phone needs to communicate with that base station okay but if there are many base stations then your mobile phone can easily communicate with the base station because at least you can find a base station within a radio of radius of 5 kilometers or or, or or normally generally okay fine and then local interference that is these uh, signals that is the the mobile phones within the particular cell should only go through local interference it need not uh, go through the interference uh, from all okay but if you have only one base station then you have to face the interference of everyone okay. every other signal and robustness cellular systems are decentralized okay and so robust against the failure of single component if one particular component fails the entire system will not fail that is what is called as robustness okay. but uh, cellular but then we have discussed the disadvantages of cellular uh, disadvantages of cells okay and then we have discussed like how interference can be avoided uh, by using uh, several techniques that we have discussed okay uh, so how clusters are formed so we discussed uh, like one one network with, uh, with 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 three cells forming a cluster and and another network with uh, seven cells forming in a cluster okay and using sectorized antenna also 
the using sectorized antennas also the interference can be reduced to a larger extent okay. and then finally we have discussed that in cdm if you are using cdm uh, uh, then then you do not need uh, elaborate channel allocation scheme or complex frequency planning all these are not required for uh, uh, cdm it is if the system uses four division multiplexing uh, then those things are not required then finally we have discussed like how the uh, how one of the user may get disconnected if he, if 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 other users demand more content how the cell size get shrinked okay so that we have discussed with an uh, uh, example in this diagram right so that's it about cellular systems and uh, and and also that that's it about this particular uh, session uh, which is wireless transmission so now let us have a brief summary uh, of whatever we have discussed so far under wireless transmission so under this heading wireless transmission so initially we have discussed the frequencies of radio transmission initially we have discussed the frequencies of radio transmissions so they so under basics of wireless communication we have discussed the frequencies like what are the various frequencies uh, we have discussed from uh, uh, very low frequencies to extremely high frequencies and uh, different frequencies for for communication of uh, different informations so we have understood that a long wave uh, can penetrate through obstacles that is long wave in the sense low frequency waves Okay, whereas short waves like high frequency waves will be uh, get uh, get absorbed by the obstacles. Okay, and then we have discussed antennas. We have discussed different types of antennas like omnidirectional antenna, bipole antenna, and directional antennas. So like, like that, we have discussed uh, uh, many types of antennas and its features. Okay, and then we have discussed the effect of the signal when the signal is passed through an uh, Uh, through the wireless media, how it get affected? Okay, uh, so basically, even in the free space, the strength of the signal will reduce uh, proportional to one by d square. D represents the distance that we have discussed. Similarly, the signal may also go through other effects like shadowing, reflection, diffraction, scattering, etc. Okay, shadowing means when the sig when the signal hits the object. the object will absorb the signal and 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 it will not leave anything so that is called as shadowing okay shadowing happens if the if the size of the signal if the size of the object is greater than the wavelength of the signal okay then we have discussed reflection so reflection means if the when the signal hits that object it will be reflected back so this happens if the size of the object is less than the wavelength of the signal okay similarly we have also discussed uh, uh, diffraction okay so so which means if the if the signal uh, hits at the edge or edge of an object then it may get diffracted and also we have discussed scattering okay we have also discussed scattering so scattering happens if the um, so scattering happens if the if the size of the object is less than the wavelength of the signal reflection and shadowing happens if the size of the object is more than the greater than the wavelength of the signal okay so previously i said reflection uh, the size of the object is less than the wavelength but but that's not the case the, for reflection and shadowing the size of the object should be greater than the wavelength of the uh, signal okay so this is the effects of the signal and then we have discussed multipath propagation so with multipath propagation uh, the signal will 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 arrive with a time delay the signal will arrive with a time delay to different paths and because of that it may create a problem called as intersymbol interference so that we have discussed and also we have discussed that the inter intersymbol uh, interference can be rectified if the sender and receiver are fixed by Um, by using a compensator okay but if the sender and the receiver are moving uh, then how can you 
uh, fix that then then that is really a, a challenging thing so normally in, in radio communications what happens in the sense while traveling if you try to listen to the radio the signal will get disturbed because uh, because the receiver is keep on trying to adapt to the uh, right frequency so the signal is getting disturbed okay so uh, so so those concepts uh, we have discussed and then we have uh, uh, we have uh, we have also uh, yeah we have discussed uh, multiplexing techniques various multiplexing techniques like uh, uh, space division multiplexing frequency division multiplexing time division multiplexing and code division multiplexing and what are the advantage and disadvantage of, uh, of these techniques uh, when which technique should be used all these things we have discussed so under time division multiplexing under frequency under frequency uh, under time division multiplexing we have also discussed that uh, time division multiplexing can also be used along with a frequency division multiplexing then we have discussed uh, uh, different modulation schemes okay so that is digital signal if you want to transmit the digital signal through the through the wireless media then you cannot transmit the digital signal directly it should be modulated so first you have to first you have to convert it to analog signal for that we have to use a technique called digital modulation so we have discussed various digital modulation techniques like uh, amplitude shift keying frequency shift keying phase shift keying and also we have discussed concepts like uh, uh, advanced frequency shift keying okay under uh, under advanced frequency shift keying we have discussed minimum minimum shift keying similarly we have discussed advanced phase shift keying under advanced phase shift keying we have discussed uh, QPSK quadrature phase shift keying and and QAM quadrature amplitude modulation. So so the and also we have discussed uh, sixteen QAM how sixteen QAM uh, can be done. Okay. So these are the various concepts we have discussed. And also we uh, discussed that it is just not enough to perform a digital modulation by using uh, ASK FSK or PSK. But the resultant signal should also be uh, modulated using the analog carrier. Uh, then only the signal will be converted to a high frequency signal and then it can be transmitted. So directly after uh, converting it to analog signal, you cannot, uh, the analog baseband signal cannot be transmitted as such because of various reasons like the length of the antenna uh, and other reasons uh, we have uh, discussed. Okay. So that is what we have discussed under modulation. So these are the different modulation schemes we have discussed: uh, ASK, FSK, PSK, advanced FSK, and advanced uh, PSK. Okay. Following that, we have discussed spread spectrum. So, so the signal can be spreaded across the frequency uh, domain, and then it can be transmitted. So basically, spread spectrums are used uh, uh, to to, to reduce the uh, narrow band interference, okay? So how it reduces the narrow band interference that we have discussed through two techniques. One is DSSS, there is direct sequence spread spectrum, and the other one is FHSS, uh, which is uh, uh, frequency hoping uh, spread spectrum, okay? So in a, so, so basically, in a, in, a, in a direct sequence spread spectrum, the input signal uh, will be XORed uh, with a chip sequence. The input signal will be XORed with a chip sequence, okay? The input sequence uh, will be of uh, longer duration, uh, whereas the chip sequence will be of shorter duration. So, and the resultant signal will be modulated and then it will be uh, transmitted, okay? Whereas in, F, whereas in frequency hopping spread spectrum, the entire bandwidth will be divided into uh, multiple smaller frequencies. And then we have discussed two types of uh, uh, FHS, the short FHS and long FHS. With, with, uh, with, with short FHS, uh, the, the, the transmitter or the receiver will use the same frequencies uh, for multiple user data. Okay. 
whereas in case of first uh, uh, first first uh, first uh, hoping uh, what happens in the sense the 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 sender the transmitter or the receiver uh, will switch from one frequency to another frequency uh, just for transmitting one data of the uh, user okay so this is how spread spectrum works and then finally we have discussed the cellular systems so how cellular system works what is a cell why there are why should we have so many base stations and how interference can be avoided what is the advantages of having many base stations over one base station what is the disadvantages of having uh, not having one base stations one base station okay and and uh, and how sometimes a user may uh, get disconnected from a cellular phone cellular network okay so all these things we have discussed under cellular systems okay so that's it about the topic wireless transmission so let us stop here thank you